World Cup curse. Oh, God. World Cup curse. If this happens again to this French side in this group, I think it will be the most shocking. Actually, no, Italy in 2010 was the most shocking because that group was... Uh, it's No offense to Paraguay, New Zealand, and Slovakia. Italy should have made it out of this group. If France can't make it out of a group with Denmark, obviously Denmark, I think, are the favorites. That's just my opinion. Australia, who we know have been... Eh, you know, iffy. And Tunisia, who I think are underrated side. Like, <laughs> do you think that... I, I won't ask for your prediction, but are you worried with France? There's a lot of stuff in the background. All these... Just so many players with issues and then injuries now with Kante, of course. And it looks like Varane might miss the World Cup. Well, let's see if it, how severe his injury. So are you worried with this French side? To be honest, yeah, I, I am. I, I think there's... The dressing room is definitely not the same as 2018. Um, injuries are a huge problem. Mbappe's ego has been talked about a lot recently. The one positive, of course, is Karim Benzema, who has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. But there, there's just been so much unfortunate circumstances right now for the French national team. This is a very doable group for them, which is why the World Cup curse seems so crazy to think about. <laughs> but that's what we said about Germany last time. Right, they were the clear favorites in that group, and look what happened. It's I wouldn't rule anything out. Obviously, it's still crazy to think about a massive side like France to not make it out of this group. But based on the way they've been playing in the Nations League, although again they suffered through some injuries there and roster issues, but that could easily translate to the World Cup. And I mean, N'Golo Kante is already a huge loss. He's confirmed to not play in the World Cup. Rafael Varane just picked up a massive injury against Chelsea. Actually, I'm not sure if that's confirmed yet if he's missing the World Cup. But we, there's we don't rumors. we don't know yet. We don't know yeah. yet at the moment. But he was crying, so it could be bad. Let's see. Yeah. So, and there's many more cases as well. I'm just not. Of course, this side has so much depth. That's why it's mm. still, you know, crazy to think that they can blow this. But again, we just saw it in the Nations League. Of course, everyone wants to write off the Nations League, but. Anyone would have said you were crazy to say France were going to top that group as well. And look at that. They came in third place. So they're coming up against Denmark again. I think it's going to be a huge challenge for them. I really do. They had Denmark already beat them head-to-head -head twice. So you, you've obviously watched France when watching Croatia. Are you impressed by this side? Or do you think they're just that Didier Deschamps was trying a lot of different tactics and trying a lot of different players? What, what did you get with the sense when watching France? Now, of course, he's going to, you know, test things out. There, there's no denying that. I mean, that's what a lot of this Nations League campaign has been for many of these teams. But to be fair, that's what Croatia were doing as well. I don't mean to keep hyping up my national team. but And Denmark. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Croatia, this was Croatia's chance to try out a new back line. And now everyone's, or many Croatians, are very hopeful for this side now because the back line's looking better for them compared to before with all these youngsters coming in. And for France... It hasn't really translated in terms of that. I mean, they tried to utilize some new players um, and new tactics. And, of course, it didn't really work out their way. Of course, the Shams can go back to what he's been doing before. But, again, these injuries and lineup issues could cost them. Dressing room, again, it, it might not be at its peak. So, yeah, I don't want to rule out these other teams from squeezing in a second. And maybe France could drop. Hey, I'm telling you, if this World Cup curse continues... <laughs> whoever wins the world cup just don't even bother qualifying for the next one because <laughs> it's just insane at this point that's the well, only way to stop the curse it's the only way to stop the curse and like like you said this team is so talented if they like Kante, who has obviously been a big part of their team for the last couple of years you just put chua many there and chua many has been balling out this season so it's just going to be interesting to see how Didier Deschamps is going to play. Is he going to play five in the back or is he going to play four in the back? He's going to play, continue playing Griezmann because that's his guy. Even though Griezmann has been doing better now recently, there's just a lot of question marks. So you don't really have the full confidence with this side, but it's like England. They could just turn it around. We, we just have no yeah, clue with France. We have no clue with France. Now, continue with the group. What about um Australia? So this is not the same Australia... Graham Arnold side, of course. Don't really rate the manager, but, you know, he did defeat Peru on penalty shootout, even though it was some kangaroo tactics with the goalkeeper, which was absolutely amazing to watch. But, hey, you got to do what you got to do. And 
I just don't really have confidence with this side. I think it's similar to other teams where, where's the goal going to come from? That yeah. was a that was a big issue for them. Where are the goals going to come from? They've tried a lot of different strikers, so, but they could surprise. I, I wouldn't be shocked. What do you have confidence with Australia? Not so much. Is it just like okay, it's going to be similar to 2018? They're going to be competitive, but they won't. Maybe they'll grab one point or two points. The beauty of this sport is anything's possible. And although Australia mm -hmm. haven't been that convincing in the Asia qualifiers. They, they improved in those playoffs, like you mentioned. So they could really be going through, you know, an upwards trend here. I don't think they got the best practice, though, unfortunately, recently. I believe they played two friendlies against New Zealand. So, obviously, don't mean to disrespect New Zealand, but I feel like they should have had more practice against other teams elsewhere in the world, apart from Oceania. So, I am not too confident in this side, but I won't be surprised if they're the side to help out that World Cup curse continue because they really are going through an upward trend from those qualifiers. The playoffs, they were looking great. Everyone was banking on Peru, including me. I yeah, really same, thought same Peru here. were going to be the team in this group, and I thought we were going to see a repeat of France, Denmark, Peru. Instead, we're seeing Australia in the mix. Well, they were all in the same group last time, but Peru put off fantastic fights in the last World Cup despite getting knocked out of the group stage. I thought they would be the team to be the destined World Cup curse side. But yeah, I, I'm I'm going to have to say Australia aren't to that level, even though they beat them. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they could. Yeah, and they got some quality players. You think of the likes of Aaron Moy, uh, Rogic in the mid of midfield as well. Let's see if Awer Mabil, who I've also been very impressed with him when he plays for Australia. Let's see if they can step up their performances. But Oof, it is going to be a tall order. Their first match day against France. If they beat France, <laughs> France are done. That, that's that's that, the tempo, yeah. That's the tempo. Sets the tempo and it's it's finito after that, in my opinion. And then, let's get to Denmark. Because I love this team. And I think a lot of people are going to write them off again. But Kasper Hulmond is a top three international manager in the world. Agreed. I The guy is a genius. He can play any sort of formation. He can have different personnel and they still play like a team. It feels like when the Danish players go to their national team, they actually have pride and they they just have a system that they know what they're, they're doing. And now with Eriksen back, the only question mark I have with Denmark is, can Kasper Dolberg be that guy? Because they don't have that striker who can consistently get the goals. If Kasper Dolberg who shows, shows glimpses of brilliance and then goes missing. If he can just be consistent, I think Denmark can actually make a deep run. I think they can make a semifinals. I actually, in my prediction video back in, I think it was May, I had them in the final. I I, I wow. really do. I do. I really like this side and I just, I rate Kasper Hjelman. They know what they do in term, tournament football. So are you as high on Denmark as me? I've... I'm not 100% confident that it will be a final display, but I definitely think they can have a good run. And for me, they are going to be that first place team in this group. I think they Great. can top France again, just like the Nations League. Like you mentioned, fantastic manager, fantastic squad. Many underrated players that, to me, go under the radar, yet once they play together collectively, it's just a whole nother level out there. They do have some occurrences where they haven't been able to beat certain sides. I don't mean to rub it in, but they couldn't beat Croatia twice. <laughs> but I, you, ha you, you just had to get that in. <laughs> I'm taking pride in that because I really yeah. respect this Danish side. I really think they're fantastic. So I think that's a huge boost for Croatia to beat a side like that. And I think that this group is doable for them. They're already familiar with France as of recent and in the last World Cup, sharing a group with them, Australia as well. And I think they can beat Tunisia. So I, I really wouldn't be surprised if Denmark are able to get three for three wins or two wins in one draw here. Such a great side, really. Yeah, I agree. And I think they have a lot of key players. You look at Joachim Mele, for example. You look at um, Skov Olsen. You look at Mikael Damsgaard and these sort of guys. So Joachim Andersen, the center backs, they got a lot of good players. And they might not be the greatest talented, talented team, but when they put it together... You, you can't beat them and they're going to be a very tricky team and I think Denmark can they have the, the skills and the recipe to finish top of this group yes so, uh, yeah the but Danes 
don't disappoint us. <laughs> we put yeah. a lot of faith in you. <laughs> I, I think most people are. Uh, maybe some people are still expecting France to do better, but mm. um, I think most people are expecting them to still have a solid run, quarterfinals minimum for this side, I'd say, because they should be coming up against... If they get first in that group, I think they should be playing second of Group C. So I think they could win that matchup. Um, the one concern I have for Denmark, which used to not be the case whatsoever, is uh, Schmeichel, unfortunately. Just because he was he's such a warrior for the team, don't get me wrong, but he hasn't been having the best season for Nice. So I do Good hope point. he improves his form for the national team. I think he still has the potential to, but that's really my only concern. This side, when they play together, it's just a whole nother beast out there. Good point. That's a very good point about Kasper Schmeichel. He has not had a great season with Nice, but they haven't been great either. And then the last team is, I would say, one of the more underrated sides in international football. They might not be the most talented. They might not play the most attractive football. But you know what Tunisia do? They get the job done. That That's what I respect them a lot. I didn't have a lot of faith in them in the AFCON, even though they had a lot of COVID issues. And they did very well. Can they beat France? I think they can. I think they have a good chance of finishing third in this group, which I think would still be a really good achievement. But what what do you feel like with Tunisia? Underrated side? Definitely. I think they are underrated. Yes, they scraped through that last stretch of the World Cup qualifiers, qualifying off of an own goal against Mali over both legs. <laughs> it, it's really incredible. But during these friendlies, they have every reason to be more confident. Um, not this last window, but the window before that, they had pretty decent scorelines against the likes of Chile and Japan. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these World Cup sides, when they schedule a friendly against Chile these days, they seem to pull a result against them. But still, it's a side that has some history, although they're not looking as dominant as before. Um, and Japan, that's a World Cup side that people are expecting to put off good yeah. fights. I think, they beat them. I think they beat them 3-0, actually. Yeah, that's a huge scoreline. And, you know, the, before, like you said, they were scraping the results, get, doing whatever they can just to get the result in. But now they're actually looking to play with a bit more confidence up top. They're experimenting new things. And we could very much be surprised with how Tunisia play out once they kind of sort their tactics together by the time the World Cup rolls around. And I think there's only one name to really point out with this team, and that's Wabi Kaziri. Uh, yeah. he's, he's, he's everything for this team, but they have shown defensively very very strong AFCON World Cup qualifiers they don't concede a lot of goals so if they can limit let's say three goals allowed I think they have a good shot of finishing second or third I really do and then the key thing will also just be the goal scoring can they just get enough goal scores are they gonna have to only rely on what because he to get the goals so that's gonna be the biggest question mark with Tunisia but I think me and you both agree that this is France and Denmark but it's just the World Cup curse. I, I'm I am leaning towards that World Cup curse, man. I know it sounds <laughs> crazy, but you would have called me crazy to say it was going to happen to Germany. So I or I am leaning towards it, yeah, or Italy, yeah. So uh, or Spain. Like if I'm going to expect one of these teams to help that curse come to life, Tunisia or Australia, because we already said Denmark's topping this group. I'm going to go for Tunisia. And look who Tunisia are playing on the final match day. Well, that's what makes me think it could happen. <laughs> it ah, could be all up to them. Oh, that would be insane. That would be insane. <laughs>